What's up, Panthers Nation? We're back today with another video. Keep pounding. Today's topic is day two of free agency. Teddy Bridgewater, Trey Boston, and Colin Jones. Before we get started, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit that bell, and select all. So you do not miss any new videos. Let's jump in. All right. Uh, yesterday, we're going to start with day two. Teddy Bridgewater was signed for three years for $63 million. Um, I think that's a little bit much. I think Marty went a little bit overboard, but... We wanted to make sure we got Teddy. And, you know, I've had a handful of comments from people saying that's a lot of money if we're going to tank for Trevor. And I agree. Uh, but if you consider, Marty has had a bad habit of overpaying players. You know, and it's happened year after year after year of his tenure, you know, his first time around here in Carolina and his second time here in Carolina. So it's it's a bad habit. And, you know, it's, it's not really telling of what's going to happen or whether they're going to stick to my suggestion of tanking for Trevor or whether they want to go a different direction. And just stick with Teddy. Um, which I don't think is wise. You know, we're basically just swapping an injury laid quarterback for an injury laid quarterback, which is not smart. Um, at that point, we might as well go with Cam. You know what I'm saying? For less money. Um, so. Honestly, I think it's it's a bridge move. And if we were going to stick to my suggestion of tanking for Trevor, I would have signed Teddy for two years and had the third year as an option. Why? Because... In that third year, you're looking to replace Teddy with another quarterback because he's likely going to retire or he's going to test free agency. Uh, so then we've got Trey Boston. Three-year deal for $18 million, 9.5 guaranteed. Oh, boy. That's not a smart deal right there. Now, as we've seen in the past with Trey Boston, he's a Jekyll and Hyde player. So, five sixths of that contract time timeline, he's going to be lazy. He's going to be undisciplined. He's not going to put his all into it if you give him a three year contract. That's not a smart move. The last sixth of it, yeah, he's going to play hard because he wants a new contract. He he will do just enough to get a new contract and play just hard enough for you and go all out in that last part to get a new contract. But, and that's not a smart deal. I would do two years commitment-wise and for a lot less money and make him earn his spot on that team. If he wants to be here, he will be here, and he will sign that contract. Otherwise, let him test it. You know what I mean? Because, honestly, I'm getting tired of the 50-50, and it's ridiculous. Also, drink your orange juice, folks. It is flu season. Keep that vitamin C going. We got that coronavirus going around. Stay healthy. Uh, let's continue. What does Teddy Bridgewater's signing 
mean for Cam? Well, they were in talks with Cam's agent and could not get a deal done. Cam wanted a five-year commitment. Marty wanted a two-year commitment. The two could not agree. And Cam is now allowed to seek a trade. Now, I want to say, do not screw up this trade. This is critical to the future of this team and our survival as a franchise. Do not screw this trade up. I am serious about that. Um, if we get the proper trade value for Cam Newton, we could be sitting with a high round pick in 2021 plus our first round in 2021 could be used to trade up for Trevor Lawrence so we cannot screw this up now with his current injury status and what's going on with him um, plus the fact that we now don't want him that is going to diminish his trade value quite a bit before this he was worth two trade uh, draft picks uh, probably a high one and one low one or mid range possibly worth a player um, now he's only worth one and I would say it's going to be a high round pick so that being said this is our chance to get that 2021 high round pick and trade up for Trevor Lawrence. And I know people are going to say, why would you why would you sign uh, Teddy Bridgewater for a $63 million contract? I wouldn't. I said that at the beginning of the video. And this is why. Bridgewater is supposed to just be a stepping stone to Trevor Lawrence. I've said that from the very beginning. You know, and I put it all in the fan pages. I put it in the official page on Facebook so people can read it, you know, and study my plan and my suggestion in full. And they are welcome to message me with any questions. I'm available all day today. I'll be keeping an eye on free agency. So, you know, feel free to message me. Um, if you have questions. Or leave a comment down below if you have questions as well. Um, yeah, the goal here is to bridge the gap. To Trevor Lawrence. Pardon the pun, but yes. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And Trevor uh, signed Joe Webb as a third string. He's the only healthy Panthers quarterback that we've had in the last five years. He is to be used as an emergency backup. We have Teddy, we have Kyle, who are uh, injury prone. Well, I wouldn't say injury prone. I would say injury risk. I think is the better term. Uh, so we're not losing anything by putting them on the field with a weak line right now. That we're still rebuilding on. Um, and those two quarterbacks should help us get through 2020. In order to be able to get Trevor Lawrence by trading up. So it... You know, I don't agree with this with this deal that Marty put in place for Teddy. I, I don't like the fact that he's going to be the face of the franchise for the next three years. That's not helpful to us. And that's not what I had in mind. But, um, I accept it. 
and we'll see what happens afterwards. Um, I do feel like Teddy is slightly better than Cam in a few ways right now. He can stay on the field longer. He can uh, make better decisions than Cam right now. However, um, is he worth $63 million for three years? No. No. Not with the proposed plan that I had in mind. So, you know, you take all of this into consideration. We're putting the puzzle pieces together. Let's see how day three shapes up. Um... But here is the biggest news of the day, of day two, and this is a beluga whale of a news story for day two. Hold on to your hats, I hope you guys are sitting down because this is bad. If you have not been paying attention to ESPN, you are about to be in for a shock. Tom Brady is going to sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's right. Tom Brady to the Buccaneers. Now, I just saw starting out day three, they just completed a trade uh, getting Cooks and Gurley uh, for a first round. And... Evans, I believe. I think that's correct. Um, but their best wide receiver. And uh, the Bucks are loading up, folks. This is bad. Now, here's what a fully loaded Tampa Bay Bucks team will do to us, future wise. You can kiss the division out the window. That's gone. We're not getting that. If the Buccaneers get fully loaded and they compete for a division title. We're in the middle of a rebuild. So, we're, we're basically looking at either the Buccaneers, Saints, or Falcons getting the division every year until Brady retires. And until that happens, here's what that's going to do to us. We're going to be fighting for a wild card spot every year. Now, under the new CBA, they did add two new playoff spots. But I believe that's two new playoff spots on both sides, the AFC and the NFC. If I'm correct about that, then uh, there is an opportunity to get one. But here's the problem with that. The Falcons and Saints have traded off just wrecking us. And getting two wins on us every year. One of them gets two wins. The other one splits with us. That's been the way it's been in this division since 2015. Now here's the problem with that. With Tom Brady and a fully loaded Buccaneers team. We're looking at one and five. In the division. One and five. That's terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying. That means we've got to get ten wins out of the division. In order to even qualify for the playoffs. Can you imagine folks? Now do you see the full picture of why I say this is bad? This is very very bad. Meanwhile, you've got the Bills picking up all our players that we don't want. you got the Redskins and Ron Rivera working out there somewhere who are not really a threat right now. But could become a threat if they keep picking up our players. Uh, you've got Gettleman and the Giants who just got Bradbury from us. As well as probably a few other players in the past couple of years. So, Gettleman is a massive threat. Um, 
especially in the draft. And we're about to trade away Cam Newton. We just got rid of Trey Turner as well. I mean, this is bad. Uh, there's no... There's no way to get around this. This is bad. I don't know of any positives that we can take out of this situation. And I think Trevor Lawrence would be the only way that we can really stay competitive for a wild card spot. I don't think Teddy's it. I don't think Kyle is it. I think Trevor Lawrence is it. So... My suggestion just became even more crucial. And this trade that Cam is about to embark on just got even more crucial. So, that in mind, we're going to be seeing Tom Brady twice a year. I am not looking forward to that. I know most of these fans are not looking forward to it either. Most of us hate his guts. And I'm not going to lie, I'm in, I'm in that crowd too. I cannot stand him. So, you know, here we are in full rebuild mode. And we got Tom Brady to deal with now. I would say the division's out of reach until Tom retires. And I hate to say that, but we all know it's true. There's no sugarcoating it. There's no positives we can take out of this situation. It is what it is. It's scary. It's bad. But we're going to get through this. Keep pounding.